Good morning, everyone. It's May 15th. This is a regular county commission meeting. Commissioner Faldemeyer? Present. Vice Chair Harris? Present. Chair Waymeyer? Present. Commissioner Dunn? Present. Commissioner Dickinson? Present. We're going to have Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. With liberty and justice for all. Let us pray. Let me take my text out of Psalm 37, 3, 4, and 5. Trust in the Lord and do good, so shall thou dwell in the land. And verily, Thou shalt be fed. Verse 4, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. <clears throat> 5, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Seems like <clears throat> in our world today, there's just like a trust. But one thing about it, we can always trust in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He died for us. He went to the cross for us. And we certainly can trust him. When he says something in the Bible, it, it comes to pass. And Heavenly Father God, we thank you for this time we have here today. I pray God your blessings upon each one, Lord. Just minister to us in a special way. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> Thank you. All right, consent agenda today includes meeting minutes from May 8th, tax change orders, negative $5,770.58, and an accept uh, a grant of easement from the Abel family. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. Commissioner Stoudemire? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Chair Waymeyer? Yes. Our first item of business is uh, the 2024 Noxious Weed Management and uh, Ratification Progress Report. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. How are you today? Good. How Good. About you? Doing fine. Doing fine. Uh, this is just the yearly paperwork we have to do submit to the state. Um, the management plan is just... Um, let me get my stuff straight here. The management plan is is how we're going to proceed with this year's um, treatments and what chemicals we're going to use in spots in the county where certain certain species are hotter than others. And then on the uh, the control plan, it says it's actually 2024. It's actually 2023 numbers. Um, it, it all fills in there, the chemicals we dispersed and the approximate number of acres that we have infested in the county um, on private ground and and county ground and city ground um, of acres and like I say then the, then the chemicals that we disperse and the formulations and the types like I say it's just the it's just the general paperwork every year we submit to the state so if you have any questions I'm more than happy to answer them questions for Pat is there a motion to approve the uh, management plan and the uh, ratification progress report motion approved second Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Commissioner Stoudemire? Yes. Chair Waymeyer? Yes. Okay, I'll have to get signatures from you all after the meeting. We can do that. All Thank right. Thank you. Second item of business is considered overlay of asphalt on Old 50 Highway. Um, good morning. Good morning. Um, Derek and I have been working with this. Uh, I know you guys are aware that we're doing the, the uh, four mile program as you, as you leave town. And the, the, uh, Meeting for that um, pre-construction meeting will be this. Uh, it'll be the Friday, the thirty-first uh, of May. So we'll have some answers on how we're going to get traffic through and do those type of things on that first four miles. What we're looking at today is the twelve point five miles uh, further west from basically Iowa onto the county line. Um, I know. Derek and I had discussed, and I believe you guys were all involved with the uh, three options that we had. Uh, we have chosen um, the option of trying to do an inch and a quarter overlay uh, on that stretch. I have Jed Morning here, Jed uh, Killo here this morning for uh, Killo Construction. 
Uh, we've talked briefly with that, and that's how we've arrived on some of these numbers. Um, I'm basically here to answer any questions that you have about these particular. This particular We're doing all of it. Well, this would be doing all of it, including Dane Street, which is about a mile and, a, and two tenths to the I-35 overpass coming out of Williamsburg. So when we started talking about the main 50 project, the four miles, there was some concern expressed about the condition of the rest of 50, which would be the 12 miles. And when we kicked around options, I believe it was Commissioner Harris that talked about if we could get a inch and a quarter overlay or some kind of overlay on the rest of it, that would probably be our best option at least that's within even the realm of possibility. So what we did that day, when I left the meeting that day, I did not think it would be possible for us to afford that. That being said, sitting down with Janet, looking through the public works budget, um, it is affordable. I do want you all to know, and I'll walk you through the, the financing of this, it, it is going to basically um, liquidate our public works public works reserves, not in what I would call an irresponsible way. We can absolutely do it, but this would use all of our ARPA funds, would use their project fund balance. This uses all the KDOT cost share funds. This uses road and bridge carryover funds. This uses the money remaining from the chip seal project that we wouldn't use, um, some striping money that we don't believe we would have to use but that gets us to just over $900,000, which gets us real close to this. And Janet and I are incredibly confident that the other 60-ish thousand that we would need, we can absolutely get there. We've sat down with Jeff multiple times to make sure he understands um, the budget and, and certainly he's getting there. Janet and I absolutely understand the budget believe that public works will continue to be able to operate. This also allows us obviously to pay for the two in dump trucks that we've already moved forward on and also the Texas road bridge design that we've talked about. So we feel like this is a responsible plan. We feel like this will put some life into the rest of old 50, will be a good showing of faith for the residents that live further west on it will allow us time to try and secure additional grant funds or KDOT monies to eventually widen the whole thing. That's just gonna take time. So just to recap, so we're rewidening, we're, we are widening uh, the first four miles, but then the remainder plus the, the spell from Old 50 to the interstate on, at Williamsburg. C correct, there's some places, and Jed and I both have done some measurements out there. There's some places that are even narrower than 18 feet, those places, the county will get out in front of that. We will uh, work hand in hand with them to make sure that we have that prepared to where we're at least running on 19 feet width all the way through. So some of the places where we have curves on the where the edges, edges of the road, we're going to try to get some extra added width to that. We'll we'll do our own asphalt patchwork. It's within the framework of our budget, gotcha. so it's not going to cost anything from all the norm. And then um, well, there had been one issue of, about timing. And I've talked, I've spoke with Jed. I don't know if he wants to come up and. Uh, <clears throat> so like, looks like, um, like, so John Brown, right there at Hamilton in Idaho, I measured like 19, 19 and a half, like mm -hmm. just to kind of take an average. So that's why I, when I figured the tons, it was based on 19 feet, because maybe there is some smaller areas. But I mean, obviously there's going to be some, 20 somewhere, but um, that's where those tons came up from. Uh, as far as schedule, I think, um, and we're going to have the pre-construction on the 31st for the other project, but I'm kind of thinking that everything's going to be done in September. Um, <clears throat> now, that being said, there's a possibility that there's a, there's a gap earlier in the year where you're um, to get an opportunity or like, right. you know what this we got a gap in August. you know we go and we just we go knock out portions of it or all of it and push some other stuff back you know but right now that's kind of um i would say september to get um, 
and I don't want to get too much in the schedule on the other project, but I would say September is a good mark. And also the striping doesn't seem like that's going to be a problem for when they come back and stripe everything. Uh, they could easily come back after that and knock it all out. So actually, I, sp I spoke with Kurt Claus and from Midwest Midwest Striping. They do all the striping for us, and they're going to be doing striping work that I think Kilo's working on in Douglas County at the same time. And he said there wouldn't be any conflict. They would come back at no charge if it didn't coexist if it didn't uh, meet the requirements of our of our chip seal. Is the widening portion? Is it just painted stripes, or is it anything crazy? It's not a. It, would it was just, an engineered deal, so I don't know if they did well, heat on, applied, high reflectivity, expensive. I, I think it's going to be all the same material that we've okay. put down in the past. So there'd be no same. point. We'll, no. we'll chip yeah. seal it at Correct. the same same time Correct. eventually. So. Right. And, and the additional um, stretch of Dane Street, there's only about less than a half mile that has to be striped. The rest of it's residential. Got you. Are we doing any patches before we yes, overlay? Yes, we will be working with Kilos out front and... Uh, that's some place where we can save a little bit of money. We have our own grinding. Um, we'll be able to help relieve some of the pressures of that, but I, I think our bid is about as accurate as it can be. I mean, if there's some bad areas that are ahead of the paver and we can go in and just fill it in, we will. Like deep, deep subgrade repair. Um, I mean, obviously the county could go in ahead of us in some of those, but uh, I think for the most part, <laughs> I mean, we don't, we're not doing any deep repair, but that really isn't the point of this anyway. Colton, the things that we can probably help on is we, we'll have blades in the area, and David Reeves will be at the pre-con meeting. We'll, <coughs> we'll be able to talk about out, that out front, about uh, how to knock some of them high spots down. And we don't have any culverts at the end of their life we need to think about? Um, again, on the on the 12-mile stretch, there's nothing that we would be doing that would be a hidden cost at this point. Um, we're just going over what we have existing. All right. And also, like, just to uh, going through Williamsburg, <laughs> we'll be having to, and like John Brown Road and I think Colorado, where there's pavement already, we'll be milling the sides, particularly Williamsburg. We'll be taking a mill on both sides. So when we, I mean, it's only an inch and a quarter, but still trying to match that as flush. So it does. So there's not like a lip. Oh, kick, yeah. Gotcha. All right. And uh, oh. roads is not my strong suit. So uh, tell me how this is, and just for the public too, how why this is better than just putting chip and seal on it. I mean, when chip and seal is kind of like putting on siding and covering up all the bad stuff and and not taking care of the bad stuff. Okay. okay. So um, the the goal of this. One positive asphalt is we're able to establish a better crown in the road. Okay, we're chipping sure. seal, you're not. Which getting that road, getting that water off, is extremely important. Now I know and understand it's an only inch and a quarter, but it's still more than chip and seal. Mm -hmm. And then not only that, but we're we're sealing. You know, you know a lot of that road's got surface damage, which is you know if you cover that up. Um, I don't really think this is like in a, um, you know, going to fix every little, you know, those joints underneath. Yeah. You're still going to be able to reflect through. Um, but that would be a big benefit is just reestablishing that crown and getting that water off. And then especially if there's any um, wheel rutting, um, you know, you're filling that in. Um, it's an average, an inch and a quarter is an average. And when you fill that in, chip and seal, um, you're not building up that rock in those lower areas. So those would be two benefits. Awesome. The, the drivability will be much improved, much improved. Bill, the goal, like you said, is to widen it all, but realistically, that's uh, in the future, and we want to make it presentable and usable quality at this for now. So. And... Uh, that being said, what we're doing now wouldn't, if somehow we came up with the money next year, wouldn't be all for waste. I mean, we could still widen it in the future and not basically rip up everything we've just done. It would, we would add to the road in the future. So, right. Yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. To the finances, you outlined a number of things, uh, sources for the money. Um, I guess I want to just reiterate that 
a lot of that is an annual allotment, like the chip seal. Every year we put money towards it. I don't want to get the imp give the impression that we're draining our savings or the county, the public savings. We're, we're using our paycheck on this, but we still have a savings that uh, that we, we keep back for in case a building or uh, there was an emergency use. So um, it's not irresponsible, I guess. But uh, And then we would be reusing the rest of the ARPA fund, which quite frankly is probably good to put that to bed and be using that on something that... Uh, offsets a, uh, a regular cost to the county, not um, building a new building that's going to have legacy costs and maintenance and uh, ongoing expenses associated with it. I think that's kind of a fallacy a lot of municipalities fall into. Yeah, we are not touching our reserve funds, which is fantastic. Uh, the point I'm trying to make is that this basically... This is our project for the year. Yes. <laughs> spends our 2024 <laughs> money is... But in 2025, the sun will be shining and we'll be in good shape. But this, is this, this, doesn't, the this doesn't even touch what we're scheduling for reserves for road and bridge. So this is just using their regular funds. And this doesn't touch any other things like the rock budget that we need for other roads or anything. This is just the funds that we regularly budgeted for asphalt type roads. I think that's just important yeah. to, to note that, yeah. Uh, yeah. And we were also working, that's the quarter of the county we were going to be chip sealing in any way, so we're not taking from another portion of the county resources for this right. year to put towards We're actually another. saving that money on, because we won't be chip sealed, just be asphalt. Yeah, so, so it's equitable in that, that respect also. So, all right. All right, cool. Ed, while we have you here, I appreciate you, man. Kilo has been fantastic to work with, and, and certainly we value that partnership. Hope we can continue doing this yep. for a long time. Absolutely. Appreciate it. We like working in Franklin County. So, all right. Any other questions, comments? What we got, everybody? All right. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. All right. We would need a motion to award the old 50 uh, highway maintenance 12 mile overlay project to Kilo Construction in the amount of $972,702.06. So so moved. Second. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Commissioner Stoudemire? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Chair Waitmire? Yes. Staff reports. Yeah, thanks, Cole. I don't have anything else to add today. All right. Paul, anything? Morning, commissioners. Morning. I just want to follow up on what you just did and say thank you um, for looking at that stretch of road. Uh, it needs needs improvement, and it's you know, um, people sometimes forget that's part of our economy too is being able to get up and down that road. People going to work, um, and uh, ambulances going out there. You know, quality of life, all of those things, and so. Um, it's not just a road, it's a lifeline and an economic importance to us and uh, really appreciate uh, you looking beyond the, the four miles and making those improvements and as always, uh, utilizing a Franklin County business is good for all of us. So just wanted to express appreciation for, for those decisions. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Sure. Good morning. I have a couple things. The first one is that today is Peace Officer Memorial Day. And um, so when people see the flags at half staff, that's the reason for that. Um, in our office, we uh, particularly honor uh, Sam Smith, who uh, was killed in the line of duty on July 23rd of 2010. Um, so today we will be uh, going out and visiting his, his grave site and laying flowers there. We'll also be doing those for a couple other uh, former uh, sheriff's office staff members as, as well. So uh, we will be doing that, and we appreciate the proclamation that was issued um, that was last week um, in, in their honor. And then the other thing I wanted to have is, once again, thank you for what you did with the jail, um, with that budget, and um, just an update on that. Um, in the past, I guess, two weeks now, we have hired, we brought on three full-time people or, or they haven't all started yet but we've we've been able to hire three full-time 
to part-time and we were um, able to move one of our part-time people to a full-time status. So um, we're kind of having to step back and take a breath to see we had hired so many part-time people there for a while to kind of piecemeal things together and we're trying to figure out make sure that we don't don't over hire we want to get everybody in there but I um, it's been very very helpful and uh, much very much appreciated so um, that's all I have this morning unless you guys have questions for me this may be a Brandon question and I've got you on the spot I appreciate that Jeff but any update on the elevator no not really the last that I knew they were still having they were building the parts or something for that el for the elevator and it is still out of commission so it it'll be it'll feel like a, a new environment when we have an elevator and full staff so um, it, it should be things things should be good at that point I think we're looking at September time frame is what I remember, what I remember. I guess, so yeah. but yeah that's that's I believe that's where we are Thanks. thank you Jeff um, I, I just again I want to thank you for what you've just done here I, I'm looking forward to that opportunity working with Jed and, and Kilo Construction they're a good outfit I want to again say what reiterate what uh, Derek said and look forward to the challenge of it it's going to be a huge improvement for the for the community and uh, excited Great. so thank you commissioners Don Rod I am I did a chamber copy on Friday um, new owner at uh, Arrowhead Nutrition Chamber board yesterday and then I went to the United Way board meeting last night otherwise that's all I got need a motion to adjourn so is there a second second all in favor aye, aye. we're adjourned <laughs>